Okay, so... <laughs> I have not had stream elements on my channel for so long. I never turned it off, but it just randomly stopped working. It just came back on. So, I'm feeling good about this one. But, like... If we have an issue again, I, I'm i just gonna just, you know, deal with that and then just try again tomorrow. Here, I have a save. Right, we were in the middle of helping Carrie. Just suffered an awful prank by her so-called friends, poor girl. Right, where's my, where's my thingy? I turned the Wi-Fi off of my phone, maybe that'll help. I, I don't know at this point. I think I'm overdue for like a console upgrade, honestly, but I'm trying to hold off doing it as long as possible. Seriously, this? Alright. Uh, one of these days. <laughs> Please tell me the game's quite annoying. My fan has quieted down a significant amount and that word. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> Where what? the fuck is what? my soundboard? Are you, are you kidding oh, me? Okay, what's the there hell is going we on are. <laughs> oh, who's on the phone, Carrie? The cops? It's just Hold a on. joke. Jeez. Wait, isn't that? Jimmy, that wasn't funny. You sicko. Of course I called the cops, but some guy just answered instead. What guy? Forrest Nash. What the hell? The hell are you all doing? Playtime is only been two hours. I think I'm gonna get that achievement. How are you all doing? It's prank right, night, we're gonna old speed man. this. We're just having fun. That's the kid. The kid who called in earlier pretending to be the whistling man. That's it. I'm out oh, of here. Jimmy, everyone, it's really not safe to be out. Please, go home. And waste whistling night? <laughs> No way. That little idiot. Whistling night? It's a stupid tradition. Especially stupid since that one kid died back in... <sighs> Would you take off that stupid mask if it's hard to breathe? Who's under there anyway? Hmm? Is that you, Seth? Idiot! Seth well, is right fuck. Alright, well, uh, good news. Thanks to uh, earlier, can conclude... Wait. Oh no. Streaming this seems to be fine. Who are you? Oh no, man! <laughs> Everyone, get inside! Everyone, run! Well, this is really unfortunate, isn't it? As long as he's out there and we're in here, we're safe, right? You buy time, but not much. Forrest, we have to. Heather, I already called the cops. Forrest picked Jimmy's up. Jimmy's dead. He's the best we're gonna get. I'm sorry, Who's Jack made the joke first, okay? We drove out to the old murder house and oh, of course the van who's got the keys jimmy had them oh, jimmy. Oh. 
I'm sorry about Jimmy. Thank you. This is crazy for Yeah, us. I'm sorry, Jimmy's we'll a figure fucking idiot. Out. Between all of you, there's got to be a way to beat this. Just sit tight. Oh, okay? hell yeah, I'm good at this. Heather, shut Jack up. wishes he if had this guy when he's playing. Get <laughs> sorry. Jeannie? Jeannie McPherson? Our intern Jeannie? Yes. She's my best not friend right, I was the smartest one out of all of us. She stayed in tonight. For oh, damn it. Listen. I got my buttons wrong. Well, we'll see what we can come up with. And, uh... What? Scott, you're not any good at... And... No, no, Chad. No, out of all bad of us, Chad. You're not the one to... Oh. Everything okay? No. We... Uh... We're figuring out a plan, oh, but everyone's color. volunteering to do things that are just bad at. I think we can figure out what to do, but I don't think we can agree on who should do what. I think you'll have to be the tiebreaker, or else these idiots are going to get us killed. But I... Shut up, you... Ugh. Forrest, I'll call you back. But I don't know anything about your friends. Ugh. These damn kids never learn. Breathe, Peggy. It's okay. Ugh, they do this kind of thing every year, Forrest. People get hurt. All right, <clears throat> folks. We're gonna work out a way to save Carrie and her friends. This next one goes out to all the trapped kids out there. <laughs> Very funny, Forrest. Peggy, you mentioned something about their friend working here? An intern? Yeah, Jeannie. Seems a nice enough girl, but a bit head in the clouds, you know? Not sure why we took on an intern. We really didn't have the office space for one. Poor thing got tucked away in a dark corner somewhere downstairs, I heard. All right, I'll go see if I can find her desk. Hopefully she has something we can use. Peggy said her desk is downstairs. But imagine I came downstairs that radio was turned off. Jeez, they really tucked Jeannie away. Friendship quiz. This might work. What the fuck was that? Sorry. That was really, really, that was loud shout, but like, what the hell, that actually. Mm mm. Nah uh. Ah uh. Mm mm mm. Go save Carrie. Ignore it. You find anything that'll help us out? Yeah, I found a friendship quiz with all these kids on it. If you think that'll help, then good enough. Carrie's on line one, whenever you're ready. Play. This is Forrest Nash, back again with an unlucky caller on this unlucky night. Carrie, are you there? Yes, we've got a plan, but we can't agree on who should do what. You want me to be the tiebreaker? Oh, yeah. Exactly. I'm ready. What's the first step? First things first, we'll need a spotter. Someone who can keep an eye on the killer. We'll need someone on the roof. It's gonna be a hard climb. We're deciding between Heather, Kyle, and Hot David. Heather's got this. Yes, Heather, he picked you. Now please, stop talking about all your cheerleading trophies. Part two, the whistling man padlocked the gate back to the road. Before we drive out of here, we need someone to pick the lock. Zeth, Jennifer, and Scott all want to do it. Jennifer. Jennifer. Jesus, Jennifer, you carry a bump key? Why didn't you say so earlier? Anyway, that brings us to part three. Getting the van keys. I'll volunteer for this. I don't know Jimmy as well as you guys, so... It'll probably be easier that way. Then it's part four. This is a very detailed plan. I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah, it's weirdly easier to think when you're about to die. You're doing great. What's the next part? Part four. We need someone to lead the whistling man away. We need a fast runner. For this one, we're trying to decide between... Who was it again? Hot David, Cynthia, and Scott. Hot David. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, you are. Uh, you spend a lot of time running shirtless. You got this, Hot David. Sweet. Okay, let's recap. We get the eyes on the roof, 
A runner distracts the killer while we grab the van keys and pick the lock on the PCO means please now turn over? I always wonder what that Ooh. was. What's the plan there? Well, we can't all outrun the whistling man. Mm -hmm. But he thinks we're just a bunch of stupid teens. So, let's use that against him. Part 5. We trick the killer into a trap. God, the minute I turn out, I'm just get so deafened. Who would make the most believable lead? Who you got? We got Lisa, Tammy, and Cynthia. Lisa. Whoa. You're right, Lisa. Having to smile at rude customers is perfect practice. That should take care of the killer. The thing is, when I heard the names Tommy and Jimmy, Finally, I thought of Bob's six, Burgers and ended up writing something based off this. Woods, then back to Gallows Creek alive. Who's our getaway driver? Should it be... Who have we got? Chad? Scott? Cynthia? Ugh, whatever. Forrest, you know what to do. Chad. Chad. I think somebody who's oh, not even perfect. on this, like, no go experience? for this, oh, like, that's Thanks, really good. We'll just take a few seconds for ourselves, and then it's go time. Sounds good. Talk to you in a sec. Good luck, Carrie. That actually sounded like a pretty good plan. Impressive as hell, right? Damn straight. <laughs> Waiting. Oh, the kids are back already. Line one again. I was waiting. I didn't know how If you're just tuning in, we're coming to you live with a bunch of teens about to flee a madman. Listener discretion is advised. Are you ready, Carrie? We're good to go, Forrest. Good luck. And Godspeed. You got this. Here we go, everyone. Smarter. To the roof. Go, Heather. Off and away. All right, Renner. Get ready. Wait for the spotter's signal. Spotter says go. Wait. Lockpicker, go. I'll get the keys off. God, that whistling's loud. Keys, Carrie, you need to get the van keys. His face is lying next to him, Forrest. Well, he frightened to turn my face off, so it's karma. Oh, God. Focus. Breathe. Breathe. Right. The van keys. We got him. It's up. Jennifer got the gate unlocked. And Hot David should be back any second. Perfect. It's working. I can't believe it's actually working. You're doing great. Focus, you got this. We got this. Next step, trap the killer. All right, wait. Get into position. Everybody else, hide. Okay, performer. Now, act like your life depends on it. What was that? It's a whistling man. Ow! Go. Let me go! Let me go! Just drive! Oh my 
my god. Oh my god, the amount just of relief! Carrie! Carrie? Just stare at me. And watch Like, watching this for the first time and realizing that she, I like, survived. I was like, oh my god, thank god. Thank god you're okay! Can you get somewhere safe? I can make it home. Thank you both for helping. If you hadn't, I... It was your plan, Carrie, and it was a great plan. You get home now, Carrie, before he changes his mind. Right. I, I need to get home. I... Breathe, Carrie. You're okay now. I'll call you when I'm somewhere safe. Talk to you then. Folks, that was... Uh... That was a lot. Hey, we did it! Our All of them survived. Well, most of them survived. In this awful time. For any kids listening <laughs> in, please stay inside and stay safe. And parents, hug your kids extra tight tonight. Here's a song for the girl walking home in the dark. I'm playing this fucking final work that Peggy talked through the whole time. Not so stupid teens. We did it! We saved all of them! I don't care about Jimmy! Fuck him! Sorry. Hey, Liter had a call. Oh my god, literally every single Jimmy I have seen, like, in media is a shithead. Jimmy and Shameless. Jimmy, J Jimmy Jr. and Bros. Right, I like him, but oh my god. And there's one. <laughs> That's funny. Come in. Yeah. Oh god, I'm slow. Forrest Nash here. Is it Listen, Carrie? We've got another caller live on 189.16, The Scream. What's on your mind, caller? Hey, Forrest. I just oh my god. Oh my god, I know who this uh, is! For everyone when I say that you're providing a real service for Gallus Creek tonight. It's cool what you're doing, man. Well, I'm just doing my job, friend. Anyway, tell me about yourself. What's your name? Are you keeping safe tonight? Yeah, man, I'm good, thanks. I'm at my roller rink trying to get everything ready for the Harvest Festival tomorrow. I had a guy from Starlink Security here earlier installing the Starlink 4000 system, so I'm a little behind. As for my name, my friends call me Roller Ricky, and I now consider you a friend, my man. Hey! We're friends now, huh? Well, that's kind of you to say. Thanks. Yeah, man. Sounds like roller skating is more than just a job to you. So is this vocational? I wasn't always Roller Ricky. Once upon a time, believe it or not, I used to go by just Ricky. Yeah, back then, things were pretty rough. I used to roll with a bad crowd. Not all bad, but there was one guy. Anyway, uh, some bad stuff went down. I harbored a lot of guilt for a long time and turned to the bottle. I didn't really talk about it or, or even know how to talk. It's just how it was. That bottle took the best years of my life. Or so I thought. It's never too late, Roller Ricky. How did you turn things around? I joined a support group. I, I keep forgetting it's triangle problems. button to throw. I keep accidentally pushing the pickup button. So much weight off. It's a long story from there, but I found Roller Disco. I opened the pedestal. I learned how to have fun again, cutting pedestal. loose. Long story short, it was a bad time. Now whenever I'm... I get down, I get down. <laughs> I'm finally free from it all, man. It's important just to talk to somebody that's the watch it disappear into the void oh, oh. <gasps> oh, oh i love Max. this dog well he certainly sounds like a good boy max is my emotional support dog he's a rescue dog but i always say he's the one that rescued me oh so he's cute the best dog a guy could ask little for. cutie of course the first thing i did was teach him how to skate he's better than me now a real pro Max can skate. Yeah, man. At first they said it couldn't be done, and then they said it shouldn't be done. But Maxie loves the ring, man. Is that another train, Maxie? Maxie loves trains, man. He's even got that special how to greet them. 
<laughs> Sounds like you two make a great pair. Uh, Maxi appreciates all the positivity you're throwing out, my man. You know, I'm actually hosting free skating lessons tomorrow at the festival. I think it's a great opportunity to give yeah. back to the community. The ones have been funky. Man, all this talk of skating's got me itching for a boogie. Before I switch my radio off for the night, could I request a song for us? Something I can groove to, you know, something funky. It'll be me and Maxie's final boogie breakdown tonight. Then I think we'll take it down a level. I can do that. Thanks again for calling. You and Max, be safe now, okay? Bye, Maxie. Oh, you got it, man. Peace. Well, folks, this next one goes out to Roller Ricky and Max. Enjoy. I really needed that call, you know, after everything. Yeah, I get that. He talked a bit much for my taste, but it is inspiring to hear somebody come back from the brink like that. Yeah, th that's what I meant. <sighs> You were thinking about Max on skates, weren't you? Well, uh, would you like no that? judgment? Another caller on the line. What are the odds? Better take it. When you're ready, shut the music off. Pass Welcome off. back to 189.16, The Scream. What this is Forrest Nash. It again. How are you tonight, caller? I'm doing okay. I made it home safe. Gary! Gary's gonna... Hey, I, I just... I wanted to thank you for doing what you could earlier. You know, even though we lost Jimmy and... But we just lost Jimmy this hey, time! it's okay. You were so brave earlier. Woo! You're safe now. <laughs> I wanted to ask you why... Why he didn't... Wh why am I... Why what, Carrie? Why did he spare me? After what he did... Maybe he only wanted to hurt the pranksters. I... Maybe. Did he just think everyone was making fun of him? Did he always hate these hazing rituals? I, I mean, if he did, why wait all these years to... Why do this now? These stupid hazing nights have to stop. Carrie, you did so well tonight. Stay safe and rest. Help is coming to Gallows Creek. We just need to hold on. Thanks, Peggy. Hey, Forrest, uh, could I request a song? Of course, Carrie. What song? Any song by Blast Processor. And... Coming right up. Thank you. This next one goes out to Carrie. You know, what Carrie just said has really got me thinking. About what? The whistling man left her alone. Why? There must be a reason. When it comes to masked whistling killers, I don't think a reason is a key part of their product. How many did I get? 57? Oh my god! Says. Well, it's something to consider. I need to take a break. If you want to stretch your legs, now's the time. Just hit the Peggy button when you want to get back on air. It would be funny if we just go and like return this stuff out to where it came from. I'll just take these. BRB! It would be cool to like get the achievement for like beating the game, but I don't think at this point that's gonna happen. I could still try, but I don't know. I don't know, I wish we just had the- I know we can't because it's like very impossible. It would be funny if you had one of these effects where you can just walk around freely, like after the game. Okay. Let's get going, Peggy. Alrighty, we could run another segment or- Scratch that for us, we have a caller. I know what to do. You're through to 189.16, the, the scream. scream. What's your emergency? Hello again, Forrest. Oh, God. Oh, that call with the teens was awful. Those poor kids. You have quite a time. I'm, I'm 
glad the girl didn't get hurt. Thanks for your concern. Are you in trouble? What's on your mind? I wanted to ask you again to play my song for us. You said you were going to play it, but you didn't. Your name was Dawn, right? What, Peggy? Yes. Oh, well remembered. My name is Dawn, and I wanted to ask you again to play my tune, Forrest. Long Ride Home? You know, the one that Peggy said she threw outside the window? But we don't have that song. As you just said, Peggy threw it out the window. But, Forrest, you do have it. It's just outside the window. There's a serial killer on the loose. I can't just go outside hunting for a record. I'm really sorry, Don, but we just can't get it right now. But wasn't the whistling man just at the old murder house? That's miles from the station. It won't take you a second to grab it. Call us back tomorrow when this is all over, Don, uh, and I'll gladly play it for you then. No, no, that won't do. Don't worry. I think I can bring you around. I don't know. Two and a half hours? I don't... Yeah, I'm Forrest. not going to get it tonight. What I do want to do is... Like, it would be cool to get as many achievements as possible. Like, I want I the achievements for saving everybody, and then when this what? is done, I'm probably just... Actually, I can Google Forrest. it. I just realized. You'll find out. <sighs> well, folks... I think I'm just going to enjoy the you. game. Like, we can While speed... Or... Think things over. Play Carrie's song again. Cut it off. Is she serious, Peggy? She's serious about hearing that Damn song. Damn it! I am so sure. sorry. Peggy, I, I mean, cut that off. Is she serious about? I don't know, Forrest. But we don't really have a choice, do we? If she's telling the truth. All right, I'll do it. You're a good man, Forrest. I'll slide you the key to the fire door. <laughs> wait, wait. Our fire door has to be unlocked? Yeah, it, uh, you know, I never thought about it, but, yeah. We should talk to Reggie about that later. Anyway, I'll hold the fort down while you're out. Maybe I'll even get a caller. That could be exciting. 189.16, The Screen, with me, Peggy. Okay, let's slide me the key and then I'll fuck off out of here. That's it. Come on. I don't care. I don't care. I will be back. Or can I just grab it then I? I hate her doors auto shut. It's terrible. I think I can't grab this. No. Alright, I'll go put these down. Should I leave it in the bathroom where I found it? I think I don't know what bathroom it, I, I actually found it in. Yeah, we're trying their magazine where we found it. Does this count as a bend? Can we just like put this here? There we go. Time is not of the essence right now. I don't give a fuck. Uncrouch, I forgot. Everyone else has been moved. Or did I? Where the hell is Genie's? Oh, wait, did I put that back? I did put it back! Oh, sorry, I did do that. Okay. I wish I could go through here. Fuck with the light switches. <sighs> oh, 
A woman so desperate for a song she doesn't give a fuck if I have to go out into the big bad world where there's a fucking serial killer. You know, I hope she'll be happy when I'm brutally murdered by the whistling man out here in the open. Oh! Hello. That's all Owen. Oh my god, that cre that's creepy. Here it is. Long ride home. We need. We need fusies, so. It's a good thing we're not timed, because I actually don't know where these are. I'll get back to fuse finding, because... Did I open- Why am I- Am I crouching? Oh my god. What am I doing? Where the fuck are the fusies? Alright, there's one. Right, we can carry two, so if we find... A second one. Which would be ideal. Where's the fuse box again? This way. There you go. Okay. They're the broken ones. Wait, can we actually bend the broken ones? Nice. That's better. Tidy this place a bit. So let's just not have a lead. Okay. Oh, that is a fuse. I couldn't pick that up though. What the hell? I haven't been down here. I 
think it's one of these we need, or as a. Should I take it anyway? This really creeped me out watching it the first time. Because Jack's like, yeah, like the start of the game. And I'm like, ah, no, 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 no. I don't think I see a little deep. Ooh, oh, there, 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 finally. Oh my god, fuck off. Why the hell would you scatter spare fusies all over this place? Of course. It locks behind me. And of course the key doesn't work on this side. Fantastic. Maybe there's another way back in through the basement. A, a door, elevator, or something. Looks like I'm gonna have to hunt around for some new fuses. I... Nah, that's not right. God damn it! Do the fuses add up? I'll need to add up to 70 and that's way over 70. Oh, we actually do need that one then. God damn it! I just had it! I just had the right one! Remember, so I had to like a fucking smart. You watched like the play for this. Jack's play for this like three times! God damn it, where is it? Where are you? Come here. Mine. See, this is everyone else's fault. Why the hell are spear fusies scattered everywhere? Shouldn't there be in a box? I don't know. Something close to here that isn't gonna get lost. You could literally just get a box, put it there. Bingo. Oh well, that sounded nice. That's how the killers are gonna get in later. Did you know that? Oh yeah, love that. I wonder what that one's for. Oh, that's text panels. I'm gonna click that. I could probably survive that fall. Are you looking at how stupid of a fall this is? Yes, you can. Come here. I don't like leaving that open, but we don't really have a choice. Or, see, you are dumb. Don't even shut the doors. Just leave it open. Yeah, I'm sure we're not gonna get targeted because of this. I saw the one we open. I know what one we open. Looks like the janitor's closet. What did Peggy say his name was? Ah, Clive's closet. Clive. What the hell? Peggy is not going to believe this. Yeah, we should. Oh my god. Sorry, I keep pushing the text panels button. Why the hell did he put one of them under the. Di that looks really weird. Oh my god. Hmm. I wonder how the show's going. Peggy's gonna be doing terribly. Locked. There wasn't a key in there I was meant to get, was there? Wait, actually. I have a walkthrough thingy. Uh-oh. Why did the YouTube note have come up but there's no thumbnail? That doesn't look good. Oh, it's fine. Oh my god, that's what the thumbnail is. It's from the start of the game when the like the killer appears in front of you. That's so cool. Alright, let's see. Yeah, I'm out. Oh, damn it. I was meant to go get keys. Sorry, sorry. Hang on. Apologies. I'm really bad at this, clearly. Right, show me. Q. 
keys, please. Huh. There's a key. I'll just take that. Might be important. Is that a, ah, that's what that is. Let's get out of here. It's too creepy for my liking. Would I get to try this door and then, like, it not work? Something like that. Be some stairs are that way. So it's just locked. Okay. Well, another door opens. Well, sounds like Peggy's doing great. I hate the noises that just get randomly thrown in. So creepy. It's like, what the hell was that? I guess we'll never know. Just keep going. Isn't that such a good song, folks? And now for... Jesus, Forrest, you've been gone for ages. I thought something had happened. Something did happen. Clive the janitor might be Clive the murderer. What? I'll start from the beginning. The, uh, the fire door locked behind. Okay, we just wouldn't have music. <laughs> Sorry. Why did you heave that thing all the way up here? Uh, because the basement's creepy as hell, and I don't like standing around down there. Fair. All right, let's run through this again. We have a creepy board you found in a creepy basement made by our creepy janitor, who you think is the creepy whistling man. Yep. And on the creepy board are the names Chuck Brody, Kim Walker, Rebecca Allen, oh, and Aunt Williams. Correct. Enable. And you think one of these people will be the whistling man's Clive's next target. That's right. And we've got to find them. You said there were four locations listed there too. The hospital, the power station, the gas station, and the trailer park. Clive must think the Oh my is god, one of eight March, my Forest, birthday. You have to figure out if any of the potential From targets way before are I was one born. of these locations tonight, hit the button if you need any help. Let's put some music on. How's it going? I'm ready, Peggy. Are you sure? We've only got one I shot at this. I am very sure. I'm sure. Let's do this. Okay. Name first. Who do you think the target is? Chuck Brody. And where will I find them? The gas station. Okay, I'm dialing. One moment. All right, so I saw Jack play this, and he was talking about, well, it, it's not gonna be the power station because no one's gonna be there at like three in the morning. And basically, oh, what happened? He Chuck accidentally Listen, I know selected power station, to believe the which man is was really, for really you. funny. You need to get yourself and everyone else out right now. Ow. The whistling man? Who the hell are you? Who is this? This is Forrest Nash. Listen, Nash. the whistling man's back. <laughs> we found a list with your name on it, and oh God, it's today. I finally let myself forget. I quit talking and run. Mhm. Mm I I think he ran off. He better have fucking ran well, off. Fingers crossed that Chuck. <gasps> Jeez! It sounds like something blew up. He's using bombs now. I I is Chuck? Tell me he know. made it out. Hang Tell on. me We're he made it call. out. Hello? Oh my god, I was fucking uh, worried. Forrest, the whole goddamn gas station's gone up. Is anyone hurt? I don't think so. I got everyone to follow me out. The town's only ambulance was blown to hell, though. Well, that's not good. Yeah. Damn it, that fireball threw me. I've got to get to the hospital. I'm not feeling great. Forrest, man. I can't thank you enough. Hey, but... fair enough, dude. It's fine. Yeah. On you go. I gotta go. Wait, I... Damn it. We lost him. What was that about today? Oh, Forrest. The call board is lighting up. 
Get us into some music while I deal with this. Careful with this next track, listeners. <laughs> it's dynamite. Forest! It was funny! in the basement to show us who Clive is targeting. Oh, hell And no. if that's the case, we can get ahead of him. Stop the killings before they can happen. Forrest, we need to go back down. By we, you mean me, right? Yep. Like I said, I need to handle all these calls. Maybe start with that creepy mannequin room you mentioned before. I still have a lot of questions about those, by the way. Me too. I know. Jesus, shoot, she's been in this fucking basement. Oh, there's so many. Oh my god, I just left her with a song. It's fine, she can... She can deal with it. If only I could pick that up to take with us, make sure we're not totally alone in silence. That's the only way to go. But, okay. God, how do you even like make shit like this? That's my question. Is there any other way out? Hmm. A key. What? Was this always here? I must have missed it when our brother. What a fucking upstairs. key! Did he pick up a key? Oh, it's right there. No, it's not. Where the fuck is he seeing a key? I need to get my thing for this. Hang on. I'm so confused. Basement key on the wall. Did he pick it up? Oh, wait. Well, that ain't good. Right, man. Basement storage. You heard it. See, this is all because you left the door open. Oh, I didn't. Hey, Fuck me! Warning before yelling down the I'm like, I don't like how Sorry. silent it's gotten, and then Fuck Fick is like, "Hey!" Find something and want to discuss it. Like how you just really give me a fucking heart attack? Would you like to discuss that? No. <sighs> Fuck my life. Oh my Oh, I hate that room. I'm I'm totally fine with that. Ooh. Peggy, I've found a tape and a map down here. A map of what? Looks like it might be to somewhere in this storage area. Weird. Well, maybe the tape will give us more information. Give it a play. Wish I could I can't fucking see the play button. George Bell. 1968. That's when this all began for me. Follow the maps. Find the tapes. I'll be waiting. Oh god, this is like a really twisted for Teen Reasons Why type of shit, but like... This... Like, if this get made into a fucking movie or some shit, I would 100% watch it. Has Clive really been the whistling man for that long? He says I need to follow the maps and find the tapes. There's a lot more to the story. I guess that's what this map is about. Hmm. I think we need to see what else is hidden down here. Be careful, Forrest. Keep looking. Buzz the intercom when you found something. I think I can't just buzz it now. I need to go for everything. Yoink. Got some cabinets. Oh. Hate this. 
Hate this. Time of autopsy is 7 a.m. Cause of death is asphyxiation from drowning. The degree of rigor mortis indicates that the subject has been deceased for five hours. That puts the time of death. I can't fucking see, okay? I can barely see in this lighting. I don't know where this is or what the right order is. Oh, we need this later, don't I? Yeah. I'm not like that. So, okay. Cabinet. I take it through here. Okay. God, is is that it? I yeah, that's it. Small lacerations to arms, legs, and face. Typically obtained by running through foliage. Severe blistering to the feet. As though the deceased had been running without stop. I can't see these fucking photos. Like, at all. Oh, why did they have to make me play a game that involves going down into the fucking basement and the basement has no lights and I also... Oh, do we have brightness settings or something? I think if we don't, I'm gonna check. Cause I can't see a damn thing. Oh my god, we do. Thank god. Turn that up. Alright. That's a lot better. Right, no. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be just like when I rage quite life is strange because I couldn't fucking see where the fuck I was going. Not really that, I couldn't find the fucking clues. Right. Speaking of clues, we're looking for another cabinet, big box in the top of it. Does something just fly past me or am I seeing shit? Oh, see this freaks me out. I have no idea where the hell I'm going. If you wanted just to get lost in a fucking maze, then congratulations Clive, you've, you've done it. I can't believe you and your fucking follow the tapes shit. I'm actually pissed. I get that you're a hundred percent dead and everything, but oh god, it only gets worse from here, doesn't it? Crouch. Back up. Don't like that particularly. Murder fucking central. No. Oh my god, I've turned the brightness up, I still can't see where the hell I am. It says it's on a shelf? Oh, it's on a shelf. Oh, that makes sense. Damn it. No. Did you just drop that? Really, Forrest? Pick it, pick it up, pick it up. On. I don't know where this is. All of these look the exact same. I don't think GC is going to help us in this one. I haven't actually checked. But I'm going to be the art moron who's walking past it every time. Preliminary toxicology Spine, I found it. shows no signs of inebriation. However, a high Thanks. amount of cortisol was found. Alright, I know where that one is. Or I've seen it. So, okay, we'll go back. Round here. Need to do our little crouchy crouch into this great zone area. Open up this cabinet here. Hit play. It is the coroner's opinion that the subject likely feared for his life and was chased. Resulting Pick in a up. fall from a height into a body of water where he hit his head, was knocked out. Yeah, then the last one. Following that, he was moved. Dr. Sullivan, we need to have a talk. That recording. Shut it off. 
Oh, interesting, isn't it? And then finally round here. If you're listening to this, then I'm probably dead. What the I'm a man who likes to stay informed. What is that I'm other building? Or I don't Okay, the only thing that really confuses me, right, I believe that's Clive at the beginning, right? I told you when I booted up this game that there was a missing poster for Clive, right? I don't know who that was at the start of the game because, like, they don't tell us, fuck all. That's kind of, like, an unanswered question, but, like, I keep thinking that it was Clive because, like, he's saying, yeah, I'm probably dead. He's missing, which means he's been murdered. Like, you know, I don't know. Ooh, a new vinyl for my collection. Then I already didn't know what, but still appreciate it. What the hell? Peggy is not gonna believe this. I think it's actually really easy to like rotate if so I'm just an idiot. Cause like, they do kinda seem to be not really one after the other, but like fairly and uh kinda I don't How the hell did I get out of here? Oh yeah. We go this way. Head the intercom. Head the intercom. Tell her everything. Tell her secrets. Tell her your brain the tape up. The, it's the an tape's autopsy up. autopsy tape. Doesn't say for who, but I think it must be for George. Didn't it say, oh, or was that was that Clive? Oh, that was so Clive. Young. Something's bugging me, Peggy. Mm. What do you mean? I swear I recognize the voice of the woman talking on the tape. I just can't place it. Seriously? I think you've met her before? I don't know. I mean, I just got here recently. I don't know. Well, I know. Found so. another tape that talks more about how George died. What did it say? It sounds like he was running for his life. Sprinting through trees and bushes, getting cut up all over. What would drive someone to do that? I'm not sure yet. There's also a tape about a toxicology report. There were no I signs of drinking end. or that he was on anything. What? But everyone said he went swimming drunk and drowned. It was in the newspaper and everything. In another tape, the coroner comes to the same conclusion as I did. George was running from something. Maybe an animal? Maybe, but then there's this next bit where the coroner thinks he was moved post-death. At the end of the tape, someone burst in and demanded the doctor, uh, Dr. Sullivan, to stop recording. Dr. Sullivan? Wait, Virginia Sullivan? She was her caller from earlier. Well, oh, then there's our the caller point. was involved in the conspiracy around this boy's death. We need to call her back once we finish down here. It, it looks like she might know something about what's going on. I, um... I think I found Clive's last recording. I think Clive might be gone. Gone? I found a confession. Not for And any you just killings, grabbed like zero of these tapes. For playing a part and covering up George's death. He left this behind in case he died. 
He hoped someone would find it. You... Do you think the Whistling Man already got him? Yes. Possibly. We've had a lot of callers tonight, but... Maybe not every victim made it to the phone, you know? We don't know how many there really are. Christ, Forrest, that's dark. I know, mm -hmm. but Clive said he had read about mm -hmm. other murders in other towns, and that bad. the These murders were all folks who knew us. about the incident. And the killings were getting closer so to Gallows Creek. He on. said he wanted to do something good for him. The board in his office. He wasn't tracking people down to kill them. I'm just, I'm still so confused about who was born to the star. Like, I think it's Clive, but I don't know. Like, either he went into another entrance for the building. Or there's, like, he had another job where it was, like, the the first part. Oh, Clive. I'm sorry for thinking you'd killed all those people. Do you think you found everything, Forrest? I think there's got to be more down here. I need to find all the tapes. Oh, come on. Did Clive hide Dude. Well, if there are more tapes, then there must be more maps to follow, right? That seems to be the oh case. God, oh All right, then. Bust the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. I literally find everything. What do you people want from me? Okay, Forrest, I feel like you're bullshitting me right now, let's be honest. I feel like I'm in bill shade. I Do you think you found everything for us? I think there's got to be No, there is not. There is not fucking dirt. all the tapes. I am going to strangle him. I swear. I kind of want to just start letting people die. I kind of want to make them kill Forrest at the end. Let me see. Autopsy and toxicology reports. Oh, that's fucking sucks. How did I miss anything? I went over. How much did Clive hide down there? Well, if there are more tapes, then there must be more maps to follow, right? That seems to be the case. All right, then. Buzz the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. Oh, my God. Forrest, you are such a dick, by the way. Right. I don't no okay i oh my god just go over the time of autopsy is 7 a.m cause of death, death is the degree of rigor indicates that the subject has been deceased for five that puts the time of death right one at the bottom shelf of a cabinet I'm gonna go through all this shit again. I swear to God, if I go through everything, find all the fucking tapes all over again, and you're still or something down here, I'm going to rage quit. I swear to God, I don't have time for this. Preliminary toxicology results shows no signs of inebriation. However, a high amount of cortisol was found, indicating elevated levels of This is a no, a fuck. There's another one. Did we miss one? Did we actually miss one? I think we actually missed one. I just don't know where the hell it is. Look up where this floor is staying and go. I do I actually think we missed one. I don't want to do this. This isn't fun anymore. This actually really just sucks. I'm just trying to even walk for us to find all the fucking tapes. I need the brightness to run out to see where the hell I had to find these things. Oh damn it. I hate how I have to like use that to crouch. Oh my god, stop doing that. Okay, there's literally no other tapes. I don't know what the hell I missed. Like if you're listening to this. I oh, don't you start. Yes, I know. We listened to this.
Where does it? Oh my fucking god, we did miss one. Or is this this one? Hang on. What the hell is that next to it? Is that this? Why? Why is there? Why is there a morph or something? I don't know where this is, but it looks like we have missed one. No way, actually. I. Don't, I don't know. I'm just really confused. I've searched everywhere. I do not see any other tape, so I don't know what the fuck's wrong with you. We can't do anything with that, because we fuck around with that later. Right, there's nothing in there, so that area has been, like, thoroughly checked for your fucking secrets for us. Oh my god. Push that. Additionally, there appears to be a post-mortem injury to the arm. It looks like it was trapped in a car door. Oh, we missed that one, didn't we? Okay. 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 I don't care. Is that it? Is there anything else you want to chuck at me? Useless fucking game before you really much. Can I go back? Is that it? I know I missed something. Shut up. That has to be everything now, because I literally don't know what else it could be. Found, I found a tape that introduces a new detail to the story. Post mortem injury. Oh my god, is this a. Uh, can I be done? Got caught in a car door. A car door? Yeah, after he died. How do you suppose they can tell? How can they tell? I'm a radio producer, not a coroner. Are we do you done? Think you found everything? <sighs> I oh think my so. god. What's going on here? Someone wanted oh my that god. death. I to know, see I'm a fucking idiot. And they hired Clyde How did I walk past that, that several times? Come back upstairs when you're ready. We need to figure out our next step. From beyond the grave. 3 a.m. Midnight's 3 a.m. edition. Thank God you're back, Forrest. I've been running out of stuff to pad our air. Oh my god. With. Peggy, you're working ready. Turn. Turn that Forrest, shit off. I'm stressed. I mean, really. Oh, we got a new one. How are we, we supposed to keep a show going with all this happening? Here, I have the tiger time. This is our job, Peggy. We, we got to do it. Oh, you're right. So, what's the plan now? Cry. We should call Virginia back. All right, I'll get her on the line. It's funny how it's like okay, 1987 and everyone has phones. Like Jack pointed that out the other night. I'm like, Hello, I I Creek. never even considered Forest that. Dash. We're circling closer to the truth behind tonight's events. Like some people to call it home, but then Sandra was out on her back fucking jazz run. And Carrie was out callers, getting terrorized. And you know, Dawn, or you know, must have. Anyway. Plunker, hey, it's the radio man. I love Plunker. I like the What's name, up? honestly. Solving mystery, saving lives. Oh. Right, right, oh, I'm right, gonna right, right, go right. if I go if I go and like kill everyone, but at the same time, house. I don't really want to like watch it on a video. I think it'd be more fun if I just bird. like do it, you know. So It'd be really bro. funny if I end up uh, huh. like sending well, a uh, sending a three hour slow roast pizza oh, to the frat oh, saying to call K fam nothing. and then they do call like Can three I or so hours later Virginia? when it gets there. Sure thing, radio man. <gasps> I'll just go get her. She's been getting this? wasted. Hey, Virginia, it's Forrest. I'm I'm glad you're still okay. Oh Forrest. Sorry, I'm still jumpy. Don't be sorry. You've been through a lot. I'm so sorry this happened to you, Virginia. Uh, better. I thought I was. I thought. Easy. We're not calling to talk about earlier. We're calling because we think you can help us understand why this is happening tonight. Me? What would I know? Does the name Clive 
mean anything to you? Clive? No. I don't know that name. Oh yeah, sure, Virginia. We just, we just, you know. You mentioned that name earlier when you called us the first time. I don't know what I said then. I was petrified, Forrest. Clive's the janitor at our station, and we know you well, spoke to him in the past. He's uh, he's dead now. You don't know what you're doing. He'll come for me. Virginia, it's okay. Clive won't be coming after you. We think Clive's dead. Dead? But isn't he? He's the whistling man, Forrest. Why are you so certain Clive's the whistling man? Yeah. Because he. All those years ago, he. It's okay, Virginia. He's gone. We found evidence to suggest he. Well. And. As dead. We found your autopsy reports for George Barrow. How? I saw him destroy them. Well, he didn't. I don't know if he kept them or made copies or what, but. Yeah. We found them. And we know it's related to what's happening tonight, which is why we called you. Mm -hmm. Why did you stay quiet? I. All right. One day, I came into work to find a, a boy on my slab. Mm -hmm. And as I finished the autopsy, this man, Clive, he just burst in. And he started making demands to give over the reports, to falsify what I found. Of course I said no, but... Well, when someone wants to make you do something, they can use the carrot or the stick. For me, he used both. You see, my sister is sick. She mm. has a chronic condition that's never going away. Autism. It's expensive to treat. Like me. <laughs> and it was getting yeah. to where I couldn't afford it. And Clive promised me that his employer would pay for my sister's treatment. If I did what he said, oh, and that if I girl. ever spoke about this, he'd beat me to within an inch of my life. I don't know why he had me do it, but my sister needed me. You have to understand, she needed me. We understand. Thank you, Virginia. That was brave. God, I just want this nightmare to end. This will help end it, Virginia. Thank you. Stay safe, Virginia. It is kind of good getting like the best ending though, so... I just keep knocking so, my headphones. So, Virginia is tied up in all of this. Clive threatened her to keep quiet about George's death. But for who? Why cover up these details? We could try Sandra. What would Sandra know? I don't know, but we have to start somewhere. Anyway, just be careful when you're talking to her. Don't push too hard. We don't want her to hang up. I'll be careful. All right, calling her now. Hopefully she's at her jazz studio. Jazz studio Sandra, my beloved. Aha, uh -huh. Forrest, you're through. Hello, this is Sandra at Jazz Pizzazz Jazz Studio. Who is it? <laughs> Hello again, Sandra. It's Forrest Nash of 189.16, The Stream. And you're live on air. <laughs> oh, I always thought folks called into a radio show, not the other way around. How jazzy. What can I do for you? Uh, well, <laughs> we're trying to understand what's behind the attacks tonight. We had a few questions. Why, Forrest, of course. Heck, after the way you saved my life, I'd say yes to just about anything you ask. Okay, Sandro. Okay. <laughs> Do you know why Sorry. the whistling man might have targeted you? Ha! Far as I can tell. He was just a knife-wielding psycho with superhuman cardio. He'd have chased after anybody. Right. Well, we think he might be chasing specific people. People who know about the death of a boy named George. Oh, I don't know anything about that. Sorry. Hmm. Have you had to keep quiet about anything? Any secrets you've had to keep? What would I have to keep quiet about? I don't know. I mean, could be that you've seen something or heard something. I never saw anything. And even if I did, what would that matter? And, and it was years ago. Sandra, are you okay? It was years 
ago. We know, Sandra. You do? You know about? Uh, yes. Of course. <sighs> this studio is my Do life. we not know? We were Ever meant to know. Did I miss something else? I couldn't lose my studio. Do you understand? Sure. I understand. When the rent just kept going up, he said he'd stop if I just needed to keep quiet. And everything would be okay. Of course. We understand. I mean, it's not like I killed him. What was the harm in saying I found him in the reservoir instead of the river? Right? Right? I'm sorry. I can't do this. And she's gone. I don't think that could have gone any better. You truly did great, Forrest. Well, folks, if anyone out there has any thoughts on what's going on tonight, please call in. Da -da 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 -da. That's good timing. We've got a call waiting just this second. Just plug this in. Welcome to 189.16 The Scream with me, your host, Forrest mm. Nash. Hi, Forrest. I know this is really <laughs> out of the blue with everything happening tonight. Everybody knows who this but is. I wondered if you could send this special birthday message. To oh, my I mom. like this one. You know what? I'd welcome a change of pace. I'd be glad to. <laughs> Thank you, Boris. He's my Why uncle. Why do I smell His first name's Peter, but he never liked oh, his yeah. name. There is someone else in the house. Maybe that's that. Always had salt and weird. pepper hair. Even as a kid, can you believe it? Fox always called him Pepper. Uh, thanks for the history lesson. Is there anything besides happy birthday you would like to say to Mr. Pepper? Oh my God, damn it! Yes! Tell him he can get the best birthday deals and party packages here at Pony's Pizza. Start again, you, you son of a bitch! Stop calling us. Sorry, Forrest. Let's just move on. We've already got another caller on the line. This is 189.16, The Scream. I'm Forrest Nash. You're on the air, caller. <laughs> caller. <sighs> Ponty. Do I sound okay? <sighs> Forrest? I hope the whistling man gets in with his own pizza slicer. Jesus, Forrest? Sorry, sorry, that was... That was too much. It's okay. It's been a high-stress night. Don't worry about him anymore, okay? Not for tonight, anyway. I think he's spent for now. We've got another call, whenever you're ready. Folks, don't spend your money at Pawnee's Pizza. That's all I'm going to say about that. Oh, don't for that. Moving along, I'd like to welcome another caller to 189.16, The Scream, with me, Forrest Nash. Who may I say is calling? Well, hello again, Forrest. Don. Don? We played your song, Long Ride Home. Did you hear it? Can you tell us? Uh, never mind that now. First, I'm calling because I need your help. Are you in danger? Oh, I sure am. Do you mean... Yeah, right. Yes, he's after me Do now. Do you hear that? You. I think Do you so. hear that? He must have me on the Neil is right. Because there's nothing. Right. Okay. You hear that? Tell us I everything. Do. I was out what following a lead, trying to work out who would See? be next. It's like Carrie. Chuck. Nothing and there. what happened? And I started to feel like I was being followed. So I came back to my apartment building, but this newfangled security system has me locked out. Mm -hmm. I need you to help me get inside. Don't you have a key to get in? Only for the apartment door. The front gate requires an entry code. The future is electronic, I guess. I need that code to get inside. 
hide. Which apartment block do you live in? Maybe one of our listeners lives there too. It's the new Woodside apartment building between the town hall and the trailer park. But I doubt any of your listeners live there. I don't have many neighbors. Sounds like a prime piece of real estate. The sound really carries at night. Say shit. I'm guessing you're not a dog person. No, I'm not. It's my neighbor's dog. Boy, I wish he'd muscle that thing in. Oh. And now he's blasting David Scopo out of his window. This night can't get any... What's the name of the security system? Uh, there's a sticker on the box. It says Starling Security 4000. There's a keypad, and it looks like it wants a, a six digit number. Starling Security 4000, huh? That's right. Very newly installed. I need the key code before the whistling man gets me. Yeah, of course. Don't worry, Don. Thank you, Forrest. I knew I could count on you. I'll sit out of sight. Call me back soon. All right, folks. Here's a little tune for you all to enjoy while I try to break Dawn into her apartment. And I'm not going to do that. You were pretty quiet there, Peggy. Look at that. You hear that train? Forest. Was it just me or was there something? And you see where she yeah, says her apartment is? Something was weird about Yeah, that. fucking yeah. right. Well, and Tell who do what? we know of a dog that loves to bark at the fucking trains? Here at mm -hmm. Nice try, Don. Fuck station. you. Maybe we can find something to help. Well, I'm not sure who. I'd like, like to, to think that even someone. if I haven't seen Jack play this game, I would be able to get this. <sighs> okay, so she's locked out of the Woodside Apartments, and somewhere, Clive probably has the papers for the Starling 4000. Yeah, except I'm not fucking lying, I'd go fuck all anywhere. So you can you can forget that right now. Remember to give your listeners a warning for the fucking alarm sounds that are about to start blaring. Yeah, this was the one that like really got me when I watched out play this. Like this was the one where like I turned off the video after that, went to bed and then hardly slept. I was distraught. Am I going the right I'm on the wrong am I going the wrong way? I went to go in the other door. Cause the papers are in there. Sorry. Right, he has some sitting around here somewhere. Oh, I think it's in the other this bit. It's creepy how much of this he just has like sitting down here and like no one realized. Here they are. Star 4000. Hello, User my manual. darling. Alarm ah, activation codes. These codes should come in handy. Let's go see how much she likes this, huh? I've got like a special vengeance against Dawn and like it's kind of my reluctance to like replay this and kill everybody because I would have to. I could not sit here and like listen to what would happen if I give her the entry code. I could not. I'm more than happy to give her the wrong code if I were. Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? The Starling 4000 That's security manual. It's got a bunch of codes. Good. And did you find anything else? Oh hell Nothing yes, I did. Except the manual. <laughs> All right. I found a very well, useful I'll get Dom back on the line then, Forrest. I'll let you take it from here. Thanks, Peggy. Line one. Whenever you're ready. Don, are you there? This is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Scream. Oh thank God you're back. The code is 191519. Thank you, Forrest. Is she? Breaking on. 
wait for that. Wait for that. Yeah, stay out! Nobody disrespects the sanctity of the ring! Don't ever come back here again! Oh. I'm calling the cops! Oh. Thank God. Hello? Is someone there? Ricky, get back inside and turn on the radio. Whoever that was, she was trying to break into the ring. She? Forrest, man, you got no idea. That was him! That was the whistling man. The alarm gave me just enough time to get my rifle. I don't like hurting folk, but I can't let anything happen to Maxie. He's my best friend, you know? I... Listen, man, I'm heading back inside. You gotta barricade that window. My man, thank you. You and Peggy can skate for free whenever there. you want, forever. That's a done deal. I... Thanks, Ricky. Can't wait. You got it. Talk to you soon. <sighs> Close one. Okay. Gallows Creek. An alarming process. What just happened? So the whistling man is a woman. I know. I I can't believe it. She called up. You spoke to her multiple times. I thought she was just a regular Gallows Creek strange. Really, Forrest? Why do you think she requested that song? To get me outside? Maybe, but how? She didn't know the song was outside to start with. That's right. She never actually attacked me out there. So? What now? I guess I should make an announcement. So we do have are you info. just not going to tell Peggy okay. that you Kill saw somebody outside? Okay, the music and you can make the announcement. Jesus okay, you're live in three, two... Hey folks, this is Forrest Nash here. I so hope you're, you're all safe like, and locked never inside. Actually saw me For those of you I'm listening like, to you that last call, you might be wondering what, what to make of it all. Here's how, our how dumb is he? We now believe the killer is actually a woman. One who might manipulate you into letting her in before she attacks you. We're neighbors. Look out for each other and stay safe. The killer was calling Don't themselves you face Dawn. Dog. This could be a fake name. You don't trust anyone named if Dawn. If anyone needs help or you have info on the killer, please call in. You folks have my new number, right? It's 911. <laughs> Hopefully, our next caller can help shed some light on our killer. Hey, we had a call come in. Okay, folks, time to take a call. You're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16, The Scream. Hey, ma'am. Murphy? Damn straight. What's going on, Murphy? You in danger again? No, nah, man. I've just been listening to the show here at home. And since you asked folks to call in if they could help out, well, I'm calling. Oh, I don't God. know if I can say as much as other folks have, but uh, I figure I wouldn't be a good role model to Fernando. If I didn't try to help, you know? Sounds good. What have you got? What do you want to know? Well, what can you tell us? Uh, I don't know, really. Oh, well, isn't that helpful? Right. Well, do you know anything about the death of George Barrow? Absolutely nothing. Okay. Mm -hmm. What about the killer herself? Herself? <laughs> Man, I, I didn't get my ass kicked by a lady. Uh-huh. Well, I went toe to toe. It was a man, man. You heard the last call, right, Murphy? Yep. So you know it's a woman, and you were trained by a VHS, Murphy. <laughs> I know, but man, how could it have been a woman under that mask? Let's just move on. Do you know anything about the history of the Whistling Man? No, sir. Tonight's the first time I ever heard of him. What? I moved here three years ago, man. What do you want from me? Hey man, no worries. Just thank you for trying. Right. Sorry I couldn't help y'all more, really man. Help, like at all, now, Murphy. I cannot. You asked me about gators. Oh god. Forrest, we have a call coming in. Sorry, Murphy. I think that's all we've got time for right now. Uh, all right, all right. I'll catch y'all with the gator talk later. Not. Well, folks, that was a bust. 
but perhaps our next caller has more they can tell us. Let's find out. This is Forrest Nash, and you're listening. Please help me. My name is Casey Moore. Oh, God, yeah. I'm a 25 Nancy Drive. My best friend's been stabbed. He's, he's bleeding everywhere. I don't know what to do. Please help me. Okay, it's okay. We got this. Somebody's been stabbed? Can, can you tell me what happened? We've been out at the reservoir. We were heading back to his place when we heard this whistling all of a sudden. Oh, hell Just no. started freaking out. He screamed at me, told me to hide. I'd never seen him like that. And I, I just panicked and ran and hid in the bush. Oh, no. Shush. Forrest. Then what happened? What the heck is this here? I couldn't really hear him. Nancy Drive. And Oh yeah, she definitely could have made Nancy drive from there. Casey, was his attacker the whistling man? The who? They had a mask and wore all black? That's all I know. Please, then, yeah. we need help here. I'll get you help, but I need to know. Where did the masked person go? They left. They left him to bleed out. I waited until they were gone, then dragged him into the garage and called 911. Wait. Why didn't she make sure he was dead? I don't know. I think I heard them say something like, it's not so funny now, is it? Before they left, but... Please! He needs to get to the hospital! I can't drive, so we need an ambulance! Forrest, the ambulance was destroyed in the explosion at the gas station. You should get all the info you can. What's your friend's name, Casey? It's Jason. Jason Parker. Can you tell us where Jason was stabbed? They stabbed him in the stomach, and then stabbed him again in his leg when he was on the ground, and it's... Oh, the knife is still there in his leg! We'll be right back. Peggy, patch us through to the hospital. On it. Phoning St. Gabriel's now. Switch to line two. Hello, St. Gabriel's Hospital. How can I help you? Hi, this is Forrest Nash from what Oh my god, literally open. <clears throat> we have a stab victim literally at 25 Nancy Drive that, named dumb Jason man. Parker. He's been stabbed in the stomach and the leg. He's bleeding heavily. Oh god, I'm sorry. But the ambulance is... Well, you know. I know, <laughs> but please, we need something or he's going to die. Forrest, I... Listen, you're going to have to get him here. We need to see him and we can't get there ourselves right now. We don't have any way to drive him right now. And even if we did, he's bleeding out fast. All right, listen. We need to buy him time to get here. That means stopping the blood first, and then finding someone to stabilize him. To stabilize him, you really need someone with first aid training. Do either of you have any? No. Me neither. Uh, damn it. I'm really sorry about this, but I have other patients who can't wait. All I can do is talk you through the procedure as quick as I can, and then leave the rest to you. It's fine, I have a cheat sheet, we got this. Hit me. I'm sure we can handle it. Okay, from the top. If he's bleeding out, then you need to get him comfortable and try to stem the bleeding. Lay him down. Apply continuous pressure directly to the affected areas. Uh huh. When the bleeding slows, no matter what you do, do not pull the down and and hold it over the wounds. Get them comfortable. Apply pressure. Clean cloths when slowed. Got it. I think. You said he was stabbed, right? Mm -hmm. If the object he was stabbed with is still in him, don't take it out. It's stopping the worst of the bleeding right now. If anything, you should secure it so it stays where it is. I wouldn't have thought of that. It makes sense, though. God, that was a lot of info. But I think we can handle this. Glad you got it so far, because there's more to go. Mm. I'm still with you, Doc. What else do we need to know? If he's lost a lot of blood, he may enter shock. If he mm -hmm. does, act fast. If you okay. apply a cloth and it's bleeding through, don't remove it. Just apply another on top of it. Mm -hmm. If it's safe, elevate his legs to get blood circulating to his vital organs. Try to keep him warm. Get him to rest and reassure him. We need the patient to stay calm. <sighs> All right. Uh, don't replace bandages. Elevate his legs. Keep him warm and calm. This is a lot. I'm really sorry. That's as much as I can give you right now. Try to stop the bleeding. Find someone to get him stabilized and get him here as quick as you can. 
Good luck. All right, Forrest. Casey's still on line one. Hello? Hello? Oh, Forrest, are you there? Yes, I am. I'm here. How is Jason doing? Badly. He's still bleeding. I need help. I've been putting pressure on his stomach wound since you left. But he's still bleeding. I don't know what to do. That's good, Casey. The nurse said to do that. What about the knife in his leg? It's gotta be hell. Should I pull it out? No, don't touch the knife. The bleeding will get worse if you pull it out. Are you sure? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna stop making some Girl, don't you ever no, ask don't me worry, if Casey. I'm sure. We're a team here. <laughs> We're all going to get Jason through this. Casey, is his leg wound bleeding right now? <laughs> I hate looking at that knife. Yeah, yeah. It's bleeding. His stomach is worse, though. I think we need to secure the knife so it doesn't secure move around. Knife. I think I put the. Do you have anything? Oh you can god, tie yeah, the brightness it? is too much. I need to put that back down. Hang on. Cleaning rags and hold them over the wound. I really hope these are clean. Here we go. Oh, oh. I'm Don't sorry, Jason. Jason. It's secure. I'm putting pressure on his stomach again. I'm starting to think we might make it. Forrest, can I have a word? Casey, I'm going to have a quick word with Peggy. Keep putting that pressure on and let us know when the bleeding is under control. You're doing great. We'll still be here. Just shout if you need anything, and we'll be there. I promise. Okay. Oh wait, Jason, please be okay. What's up, Peggy? We can't stay on the line with her all night. Dawn is still out there. What if other people need us? <sighs> You're right. She's probably on her way to her next target right now. Exactly. And you heard the nurse. We need someone there with training who can stabilize him. He's got to get to the hospital somehow. Could somebody nearby help them? Maybe drive them to the hospital? You know, that's exactly what I was wondering. Do you have anybody in mind? I might. A little before you started working here, KFAM did a mandatory first aid training course. Me and mm -hmm. Karen missed it because we were Sorry. away on a producer getaway. You skipped it, didn't you? I, <laughs> never mind. So. How does KFAM's first aid course help us? Casey said they're at 25 Nancy Drive, right? Yeah? Why? They put up a bunch of cheap houses around there about 10 years ago. So a bunch of people here at the station live around there. Do you think any of them could help Casey and Jason? Probably, but I don't know who lives there. And since I missed the training day, I don't know who knows first aid. Could you call them and ask? I don't know everybody's numbers. I've only ever called Karen. Everybody's personnel info is probably in Reggie's office. Got it. I'll look through their files in Reggie's office. It's a life or death situation. I'm sure they won't mind. Right. But there are a couple of problems with that. Oh, like what? Go on. It's sensitive information. So Reggie probably locked it in his safe. Yeah, well, Great. here's a solution. Great. I have, have any idea what the combo sheet. for the safe could be? And the safe Not code. A clue. And I'm Reggie's definitely going to look for your taken. file when I get in there. Maybe something in his office will give it away. Like, Jack literally right. found there is Peggy's something details else. and then didn't look for it. I'm not gonna like, like this, am I? Have you ever heard, the future is floppy? Peggy, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah, I'm we're talking in, like, about the floppy 80s, disks. Floppy disks bones. are like these futuristic things that have information on them. You put them in a computer yes, and they baby, do something. Right, wrong, Peggy, baby, right, wrong, I know what a floppy like disk a record, is. Baby. Anyway. Reggie decided that the Round future is the floppy and started phasing world, out our physical records and replacing world, them with these floppy the disks. World. I imagine it's the same for our personnel files. That's good to know. Since we haven't heard anything from Casey, I'm guessing Jason's okay for now. I'll check out Reggie's office and see what I can find. You'll need a key for that. I'll just slide it under my door now. Thanks, Peggy. I'll just have to look around.
Good. I'll patch my mic down to the office, so you'll hear me over the intercom. And Reggie's office is downstairs. Okay. Looks like I need a four digit code. Oh, damn it. My bad. It's fine. I have the code. So let me poke around here. Alright, found out. Nice! Ah. Uh -huh. That sure was easy, wasn't it? Let's put these down on the desk and then we can look for Because I actually can't see anybody's fucking names. I feel bad that I just broke into my bossy safe. Like, we're probably not gonna have a job after this. Right, can I? No. Right, what one? are we looking for right okay it's fine but before that i want to look through mine and i want to look through yours now how do i do this clive if you're reading this stop stealing my post-it notes love it How do we put them in? Like, oh, my bad. Get a load of this, Peggy. Apparently, I'm a lone wolf type. Sorry, what are you doing? Shh. We don't have time for this. Shh. We have a man literally dying. Shh. I don't life. care. Don't There's time. You. You're right. I'm sorry. I need to focus on possible candidates. I don't care. I can read the rest of this later. I can't believe we actually got the forest now. here in Gallows Creek. His beliefs may be low, his demands are a bit beyond our means, and he's currently blacklisted from any reputable station. <laughs> but honestly, we don't have a reputation to lose. Isn't really integrating as a team, seems to have this lone wolf thing going on. Heard him call Jeannie, Jeannie, Janine, and Brenda on his first week. Hopefully this changes when I get settled. I've paired for us to Peggy for his show. They seem to have developed a relationship with ours pretty quietly. It's just good, because we sure don't have to much to on Karen. Okay. Now we just... God, I hate this. How do I... Hello, secret floppy. And whose are you? This is blank, because this is like a blank one. Oh my god, he's... Back into the door. How do I get them back out when I've like used them? Oh, the eject button, of course. Here. I'll be nice enough to put these back. Who's is this? Oh. I kind of want to know what they all say. Is that bad? Yes. Do it anyway. Did not like that. K 
Karen has really stepped up her duties in recent months. Billy taken on Hamish's show alongside the Timberland twins ever since Wes left us. Hopefully she doesn't get any ideas about being paid double. Started mentoring Peggy. I think this will be really good for Peggy. They're even doing the building training and get always timber efficiency. I'm starting to suspect these producer training getaways are being strategically tight. <laughs> the Teddy Gallows I don't blame you for that last one, but how could you miss the first aid training? She's kind of trying to keep forgetting where the button is. Yoink. I want to find out all the secrets about the peoples. I should shut this so Reggie doesn't know I've been in here. Bradley Carter? I don't even remember you getting mentioned anyway I'm just gonna shove you in there Barbara Albright that's fun Barbara is really getting on well with all the stuff here everybody give her grief about less review I get the feeling there's something going on with her and Brad call it a hunch got another cat recently she must have at least five now Daisy Murphy, Penelope, Freddy, and Lord Winston. <laughs> and to monitor productivity going forward, the cat photos are right to strand on. But it comes with a new horse girl, so I don't care what she thinks. A story about an alien egg at the centre of the earth set to hatch in February 30th. February 30th is a good idea. Why else would we avoid having a February 30th? I like that, honestly. That's awesome. But like... A bit confused, but you know. It's fine, it's in there. Alright, Peggy, I'm looking at yours. Hey, Peggy! Mm. I think Reggie's on to you and Karen. Maybe don't bring those little drink umbrellas into work for a while. I've never seen somebody right. I'm sorry. gel with everybody as quietly as Peggy has. Her, Karen, really and Barbara have really become a family already. Hurry. Maybe two in this distant girl power hold but it's cheaper than electric. Oh, this. Hmm. wonder if I should have shot Barbara's. Oh, never mind. What is this floppy that he has hidden in his drawer, or is that just like... Would that have helped us like find the important dates or something? I go up. Shut closed. Open. Ah! Uh, would this be it? Who's the delivery killer? He kills a pizza cutter. Free slice on me. Terrifying that there is never any pizza. What happened to the original delivery guy? Maybe write him in as final girl's boyfriend. Protagonist is college student Megan. Sorry name to follow. Smart, beautiful, resourceful, lot of and tolerant. Amplifies the divide between her and particular. particular. Great Goose Gallery. Need to kill off Megan's support network for the movie. Mm. Maybe partner with Ponty's pizza, fuck that. Can you go in the same way? You go back and there. And finally, our guy. Let's intercom Peggy. Hey Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? Oh hell yes. I think I know who our best bet is to help Casey and Jason. All right, good work. Who should I... Hello? Is anybody there? Please, pick up! Casey, I'm here. What's wrong? Jason started going pale. I tried to get him to rest, but he just threw up everywhere. What's happening? What do I do? God, it sounds like he's going into shock. Casey, just stay calm. It's going to be okay. Casey, calm down. You've done everything right. I I need you to listen to me, okay? For Jason. What did the nurse say to do about shock? Casey, 
I need you to elevate Jason's legs. We need to get the blood flowing to his vital organs. Got it. Don't remove the bandage. Apply another one on top of it. Do you still have something you can use? I've used the rest of the laundry to keep them warm, so... I'll use my jacket. I can always get a new one. I'll fix the bandage and get them warm. Hold on, please. Oh. Sorry, sorry. I'm done. Jason is going to be fine. Just make sure he knows he's going to be okay, okay? Okay. Please, I, I can't give him what he needs. Please, help. I can't lose him. All right, Forrest, we need to hurry. Jason doesn't sound like he's doing too well. You said you knew who to call earlier? Who was it? We need to call John Hedges. He lives on Nancy Drive. He didn't really participate in the first aid training, but he's a former war medic. He's probably the most trained person we have. Really? I never really spoke to him before. A war medic, huh? Yeah, and according to Reggie's notes, John keeps all of his old equipment at his house. He's something of a hoarder. All right. What's his number? Uh, five four two zero seven three five. Calling now. Let's hope he picks. Uh, who the hell is this calling me? What time is it? John, it's Forrest Nash here at KFAM. We have an emergency and we need your help. Forrest, if this is a work emergency, then it can wait until the goddamn morning. Just very fair. Leave me a note like everybody very, else. very fair, but it's kind of John, important. John, no, this is a medical emergency. A man has been stabbed by the whistling man, or never mind. He, he's badly hurt and he's going to die unless we get someone to him now. The whistling man? What kind of joke is this? John, we're not kidding. A man is gonna die if we don't help him right now. Seriously, I... I, I haven't been called on for over 10 years. Where's the patient? What's his condition? He's at 25 Nancy Drive. I think we got his friend to stem the bleeding, but he's gone into shock. He's passed out right now. You say he was stabbed? Mm -hmm. Do you know the extent of his injuries? From what we were told, he has two major stab wounds. One to the stomach, and one to the leg. The knife is still in his leg, and the stomach wound is open. Understood. Let me grab a few supplies and I'll head right over. Let oh my god, Night Owl. Damned if he dies on my watch. <laughs> Thank you, John. Sorry. We'll let him know you're on your way. Good luck. Hello, Casey. Are you there? How are we doing? What about now? Is he still thrashing? He's passed out. Please tell me you found someone to help. Casey, help is on the way. My colleague will be there soon. You hear that, Jason? Someone is coming. You're going to be just fine. Just hold on for me, okay? Just hold on. Come on. And with that, the show moves on. We're sending our best wishes to Jason. Well, after all that excitement, 
I think we could use some music. Oh. Come back upstairs when you're ready. Can get everything that we like can collect records everything I don't oh. dead ear of course thanks Peggy Peggy, I'm coming. It'd be funny if she just like shouted that down at me. I better put a record on. pretty late. This might be your last break for the night, so try to enjoy it. Give me a buzz when you want to go back on air. I wonder if you guys even forget a hundred of those. I'm not going to hundred of them. Let's roll. You got it. Oh, we've got another call coming through, too. Time to turn the music off. Yes, yeah, thanks. I know this Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. I believe we have another caller on the line. How are you tonight, caller? Orange. It's me, yeah, Roller Ricky. Boys. Oh, hey, Maxie, oh. My life, boys. Good to hear from you again. How are you both doing? Oh, uh, we're good, man. Thanks to you. You're like our guardian angel. That wouldn't be a bad look for you, Forrest. A little white wing halo number? Maybe something for the KFAM Halloween party. All right, everyone, let's calm down. Ricky, I'm just glad we could help you and Maxie. Is there anything else we can help you with, Ricky? Actually, I think I have some info that might help you. Oh? What's that? You see, man, uh, me and Jason know each other. You know each other? Yeah, we went to Gallus High and played on the football team together. He was a gnarly offensive linesman, and I was our star wide receiver. Runner Ricky, they called me. All right, and what does that have to do with tonight? Well, because oh. George, the guy who drowned, he was on our team, too. Tell me about him. What was George like? I didn't know him for long, man. Sad to say. We had our first team party on the night he drowned. He seemed like such a good dude. Ricky. Were you there when George drowned? No, man. Once the party turned, I beat feet out of there. Man, I remember George and his girl there. There was a whole lot of love, man. I could see it, you know? Ricky, listen, this is very important. I need to know everything about her. I didn't really know her before or see her after that. I never even got her name, man. I just remember he called her Bean. Then what did she look like? Please, tell us anything you remember. I just remember a pretty girl, man. I'm sorry. Ricky, you said the party didn't last long. What happened? We were just having a good time. And then the next thing I knew, everyone was running for their life. I looked mm. up and saw a goddamn whistling man in the trees. Mm. And I never ran so fast in my life. I ran straight home. God damn it. Sorry. I didn't know about George until next morning at school. I'm guessing it was whistling night, wasn't it? That the whistling man was just another kid. Yeah. I don't know how George died, but uh, I always felt like if anyone deserved to die that oh, night, dear. it should have been me. 
Oh, yeah, that's heavy. Ricky, it wasn't your fault. Mm -mm. You're not a bad person. I know that now, ma'am. Mm. Took a long time to learn, but... Yeah. Just thought I'd tell you all what I know. Thank you, Ricky. This helps. Thank you. You got it, ma'am. Anyway, I think it's time for me and Maxie to free up your phone lines. Thanks for listening, man. I'll let you to it. Oh. Night, Ricky. All right, folks. Looks like we got a new lead in the case. If anyone has any info about this mysterious bean, please call in. If she was George's girlfriend back then, she's probably in her mid to late 30s now. Huh. Oh, we have another call coming in, but hang on. What's up, Peggy? Um... Peggy? Oh, boy. You're gonna want to take this call off the air. Who is it? Just do it. All right, folks, it's time for another track. Here's one to help you sit back and relax. We'll be right back after this. Uh, I hope this is good news, Peggy. Who have we got? Find out for yourself on line one. Hello? Forrest, I'm glad I got yeah! back to you. Sounds like it's been a busy night, huh? Surprise! It's Leslie, our 911 operator, leading the charge from Henderson to come save us. It's so good to hear from you. Are you okay? We're doing okay. Sarah and I are both happy to be headed back home. We're happy to have you too. I... Well, yeah, Wait, I saved Sarah? Martinez, Sarah oh, Martinez. Oh, yeah, I mean Deputy Martinez. Uh, anyway, we got back into radio range a little while ago. Oh, I'm so happy I managed to save her. Ever since you found Sheriff Matthews, it's only gotten worse. Mm. It's been a long night. Oh, well, yeah. it shouldn't be too much longer now. I'm glad I got through to you. I wanted to let you all know what's going on. I made it to Henderson. Mm -hmm. Turns out somebody had cut the phone lines, Oof. and they had no idea what was happening. After I told them, well, their sheriff sent a goddamn squad back with me to stop this. That's great news! That's crazy about the phone lines, though. Are we surprised? Do you think the whistling man cut them? A hundred percent. so. I don't know how he... how she... how the whistling how the man did it. But that doesn't matter right now. What Listen, matters we're coming in hot. is we're gonna You're fucking right. stop this. I know Gallows Creek isn't a big town, but if we don't know where the whistling man is, we can't get him. Her. That's where you come in. Mm -hmm. You can count on us. What do you need? It might be a long shot, but here goes. The whistling man already called up a few times. I bet she calls again. We're still a little ways out of town, so if she calls, stall her. Buy as much time as you can for us to get in. And while you're talking to her, try to figure out where she is. We'll be listening in, so once her location is known, we'll head straight there and end this nightmare. I'll do my best. I know you will. Heck, I can see the headlines now. Boris Nash's interview of a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'll radio the other cars and tell them the plan is a go. Hopefully the next time I see you, it'll be with our killer behind bars. Take care now. We'll see you soon, Leslie. Oh, thank God. It sounds like this is almost over. We're nearly through this. I hope you're right. The sooner this is over, the better. I am right. Trust me. Anyway, we should get you back on air. Taking callers is the only way to see this through. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Bringing you back live now. Welcome back to The Scream with me, Forrest Nash. The line is lit up, but before I get to our next caller, I just want to say things are looking up. It's almost over. But for now, let's bring in our next caller. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash. Hello, Forrest. This is John Hedges. I'm here with Casey. I wanted to give you an update on Jason. John! Is, is he gonna be okay? He's a fighter. He'll be fine. 
Got him stabilized and resting in a bed. We're preparing to move him to the hospital. Thank you so much. If you hadn't been there, then... God, I don't even want to think about what would have happened. Of course, Casey. We're just happy he's okay. John, Casey, you two did all the work. Tell Jason to get well soon from us, whenever he's up for it. Well, why don't you tell him yourself? Is this Forrest? Yes, it is. The one and only. I hope you're feeling better. It's good to hear you, Jason. How are you? Oh, well, you know, I've got a hole in my stomach, and there's a knife in my leg, but John gave me something to take the edge off. So, I might feel even better than either of you. <laughs> take it easy until you get to St. Gabriel's. But, uh, before that, I, I needed to call you. I'm guessing the Whistling Man is still out there? Yep. As far as we know, anyway. Well, I was worried you'd say that. God damn it. Actually, I'm glad you called. I wanted to talk to you about what happened earlier. Go for it. We spoke to Roller Ricky not long after you were attacked. You spoke to Ricky? Was he... Is he all right? He is now. I mean, he was attacked. Nah, earlier, don't worry, I saved him. This call came I'm after. Great. Hey guys, I'm really sorry, but there's a call on the other line. I just need to make sure we don't have another situation brewing. You fill Jason in on what happened. I'll be right back. Sure, Peggy. Sorry, Jason. Uh, where was I? Ah, yep. Ricky's fine. You don't need to worry about him. Yeah, That's a relief. if this was like he the other way, we George. would be having a whole lot of conversations. Sounds like everything's finally coming out now. So. It's been tough to hold it all in. Sounds like you've been holding back about something awful, Jason. I'm part of the reason my best friend is dead, Forrest. And the few who knew about it said if I ever said anything, I'd find myself in jail for a long time. It was hell. Then the town just Oh hell yeah, over a hundred. Sorry. On. Sorry, Jason. Like you never existed. Peggy, what up? What up? I know what you What happened that night? I went along with this stupid prank, that's what. Whistling I am watching you. Some of the guys on the football team. I'm and watching you. Decided to plan a party in the woods. Mm -hmm. Have the whistling man crash. Uh, of course. We each had a role. I was the stabbed friend. At the party that night, I left the group for a second. Met our whistling man. Pretended to get stabbed in front of everyone. Uh huh. Started an almighty panic screams that was the last time I saw or heard George alive how did George die Jason I don't know I was playing dead but when I heard her scream Ricky mentioned a girl named Bean is that who you mean Bean oh yeah I guess George did call her that yeah he called her I heard her again tonight, Forrest. Her name was... What? What happened? Are we still on air? No. No, we're not. Seems like the power is completely gone. How do we get it back on? I don't... Uh... Oh, we can use the emergency generator down in the basement. Reggie picked it up a while ago in case you ever needed to do an emergency broadcast. An emergency broadcast? Mm. Fair point! It's in the storage area, in the far back corner, up on the wall. You might have spotted it earlier when you were digging around for those space. It'll have a big red button. Just press that. I'll see you when you're back. Yeah, you sure? You don't sound so sure about that, Peggy. Well... <laughs> 
that's fun, isn't it? I'm telling you, Forrest, this is your fault. Like, why the hell would you leave the door open? That's what I'm pissed off about. You just like left that open up there, and I know there's huh. probably nowhere to show Far up back still. corner. Why is this station so big? Oh god, I'm lost. I got stuck there for a second. That must be it. Uh, Boom! Push. We've got power! Oh. Whistling man. I need to warn Peggy. Oh my god, I hate that. Oh, I hate that. Oh, oh, I love it at the same time. My holy shit. I was like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I know what's gonna happen, but I was like, I guarantee when that fucking whistling starts, it's gonna. Peggy, are you there? Are you. Peggy! I need to get back upstairs. Oh, I did not like that. Someone's down here. Forrest, someone is down here. Someone is here. I mean, I guess it... What the hell? Oh, see? Hate that. Oh no. Peggy! Where'd you go? Well. No way. This can't be happening. It's happening. Um. Oh. Okay. Wait. A, a call. What do you want? to talk to you again, Forrest. Oh, here we go. You know, Final really part of the game. Yes! I guess we've had some We're moments. so close! Come on! My favorite was when Ricky ran you out of the rink. <laughs> <laughs> you sure did get me then, Forrest. Oh, if I had my sound, would I be pushing that? Have some patience, Forrest. It's almost the end of the night. Almost the end of the show. But it's not over just yet. We've got a little time still. So let's make the most of it. All right, let's. I'm happy to hear that. Huh? I Just go up, please. Let's see, real killer. Man, special with a special guest, the one who started it all. Oh, let me take that out of your mouth and. You crazy bitch! Uh, let bye. me go. Welcome to the air. Yeah, I have to Jay shave this dick face, and I don't Wait. wanna, but. Daddy and his money saved you 20 years ago. But even if you crawled out of his coffin with all the money in the world. Wait, where the hell is Teddy? How, how are you talking to him if you're here with me? Because she's Because I'm not there with you, Forrest. I'm here with Teddy. And if he says where that is, well, he knows I'll get it. Wait, then... Who am I looking at? God, I am really good. Forrest Nash, let me introduce you and all of Gallows Creek to my boy, Henry Barrow. Hi, Henry. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Don't mind him. He's just shy. I like him. For his zero tonight. Of course. That explains how you were always able to get around town so quickly. And that's how you escape the secret archives in the newspaper office. Don't think I've forgotten about that, Forrest. Locking my sweet boy away like an animal. And Murphy, he, he was right, wasn't he? He did fight a man. He did. I taught my boy to never run away from a fight. Hang on. Did you say... Barrel? That... Are you... 
Let me just get this mask off. Damn uncomfortable thing. No wonder Mooney went crazy wearing this. There we go. Marie? Marie Campbell? George's old girl. Oh. Well, it sure has been years since I last saw. Oh, God damn it. Deserved. I'd be quiet if I were you, Teddy. But I... I'd listen to Forrest. Everyone's gonna know now what Teddy did. Teddy, I'm totally fine exposing the fucker, but... You know, ago. I kinda have Listen to draw to the line at murdering you? him, cause ah! I don't want to achieve <laughs> You're gonna talk when I talk to you. And not a moment Don't worry, when I play this again, I'll kill every single one of them. I'm gonna give you the chance to talk. You're gonna help me reveal what really happened to George all those years ago. Okay, Marie. I'll do it. Good. Then let's talk about the night George was murdered. Murdered? Uh, listen, I... I Yikes. said you speak when you're spoken to. <sighs> now, I know you've done some good work tonight, piecing together what happened to George 20 years ago. And that's why I want you to interview us. Interview you. All right, I can do that. Thank you. I want you to help me and Teddy tell the story, Forrest. Do a good job. And hell, you might be the only one to leave here alive. <laughs> I need to drag this out. If I can buy Leslie time to get back to Gallows Creek, and if I can find out where Marie is. This can what end. the hell happened? What? Daddy, Why we'll does that start with you. speaker do that when I go near Just, it? Just uh, talk me through what happened that night. How did it start? How would I know? It was 20 years ago. Do you want to die, Teddy? Because if you don't start talking, <coughs> what the I'm hell? doing what the dialogue options say. God damn it. Okay. And also because I kind of want to. Here and get slapped. Was coming up. And when I saw the date it was scheduled for, I had an idea for a way we could prank the new guys. Aha. Uh -huh. What made that night special? That was the night Mooney went missing. We couldn't pass it up. Sorry. I was just surprised no one had ever thought to do it before. Wait. You mean this was the first whistling night? I, uh... Keep talking, Teddy. We went up near Whistling Point. Uh, God, who was there? Me, Jason, and George, of course. Uh, but George didn't come alone. He brought Marie. And Roller Ricky, he was there too, wasn't he? Yes. Ricky was there too. Runner Ricky, our wide receiver. I helped him off the bottle, you know, because I'm a decent man. Can you is that so? Eyes? Yes, it is. He came apart one day. Some yeah, well, he did better with his life than what he you did. What did you do? Hide he from your stable. fucking secrets, your lies, your I cover didn't up. I want him to hurt his chances in life, so. I helped him keep himself Didn't together. Really like you... You were afraid he would talk about that night, weren't you? Keep talking. About midway through the night, we put the prank into action. I looked up at the trees and saw Jason there, bloody, like he'd just been stabbed. And the whistling man... Screaming. George and I and Ricky... We got left behind. But Ricky was in on it too. I know he was. He and Teddy were as close as anybody. Teddy must have told him the plan. No, Marie, you're wrong. Ricky he didn't know. He should earlier. He told us he didn't. Did you miss that part of the broadcast? I spoke to him earlier. He had no idea what was happening. He said he was as terrified as anybody. Isn't that right, Teddy? You didn't tell him, did you? Ricky never could keep his mouth shut. 
If we told him, he would have given everything away. But he... well... <sighs> it doesn't matter. Yeah, because I saved him. Enough to tell anybody about it afterwards. He's still guilty. It was just a stupid prank. How can you still say it was just a prank? Oh, come on! I... Oh, oh God! The hell is Damn it! No, you sorry. made George think Jason had been murdered. He thought his best friend was dead. And so tonight you stabbed him for real? It's the role he wanted to play. Jason's still alive, Marie. He was with a friend. We talked her through how to stop the bleeding and got him professional help just in time. Oh. Girl, I sabotaged literally all she of your plans. I saved early. everybody. He's gonna regret that. Enough about him. Me and George took off running, but somehow we got separated in the woods. I ended up near the bottom of Whistling Point, and when I noticed George wasn't with me, I panicked. And then, I don't know how he snuck up on me, but the Whistling Man grabs me. Ice cream, and he starts laughing. Telling me this. It's just a joke. I could stall for time here. Who was it, Marie? Who was the whistling man? I suddenly recognized it was Chuck. This is why I took Target. You know, Chuck, the beggars. Was the whistling Everyone man. would have probably been laughing you know, away. If I had left Ricky to get shot, it would have died on the then He stops. What was he looking at? I had like IRL caller come in there, so we got up. Said it. What happened next? Nothing. I mean, it was just Teddy. George fell off. If he said I was a prank, I would have honestly been tempted to tell Marie to stab him. How do you know what happened? I saw it. You pushed him. You were up there. Dressed as the whistling man too, and I didn't push him. God damn it! I just chased him up there, and he kept backing up. When I saw he was about to go over, I reached out. That's what you saw. You liar! It's not my fault. He didn't know it was a joke. If he'd had any brains, he would have realized. <laughs> you bitch. No one's going to believe this. After all you did. If she's lying, why the cover-up? My future 
Oh my god, I literally do not fucking care. You killed a person and you covered it up. That is fucking evil. And then governor. And then who knows? What happened that night was tragic. It should never have happened. But it was a mistake. It was just a stupid joke gone wrong. So my father sent Clive out to clean it up. Why should have left my future? George was a blip. That's an evil thing to say, Teddy. That's the way it is. My father agreed with me. Sandra found him the next morning while out jazz running. She found him in the river, but she lied about that to protect Teddy. She said something about her rent going up, unless she... Teddy, did your father own Sandra Sharp's dance studio? It's Gallows Creek. Not Sharp Creek. I'd answer the question if I were you, Teddy. Yes, okay. We own the world, the most of the town. The world, That's it, then. Your father oh, was still going to run her out of business. Looking. Unless she lied and said she found him in the reservoir instead of the river. What my father did in his business dealings is nothing to do with me. The false reports. That's why you killed Sheriff Matthews, too, isn't it, Maria? Mm -hmm. Not just to get him out of the way, but... Everyone was in on it, Forrest. Even the coroner wrote a fake report. Said George was drinking. That he just got himself into trouble. And... Fake report? Uh, I only heard the tapes. You'd be disgusted by it. For all it's worth, Virginia didn't have much of a choice. She had a sick sister whose treatments she couldn't afford. She played along with the gallows to save her sister's life. And her own. Even... Even still, she should have told the truth. I did my part. I tried everything I could think of. I even went to the newspaper. But no, that coward killed the story. We'll take care of Maurice Russell later. You've been through hell, Marie. I'm sorry. You've got no idea. Never started. Shouldn't have pushed my door down the crib. I should have been punished. It's coming to a stop. At least for now. Here. Before George and I first met. Before he joined your football team. It was right after he shot the winning throw. Wait a sec. Gallows Creek High, in the gymnasium. That's right, Forrest. Oh. Not that it matters. Hi, yes. Henry. We're here. I like your anyway, mask. I think that about wraps up the interview with Teddy. So. Marie? Where? Oh my god. Peggy! Teddy? You've got to help me. I... Quiet. You'll talk more later. Now I have to talk to someone who mattered more than you ever did. Peggy. It's been so long since I've seen your face. Oh, uh, this threw me the first time I watched it. I was like, what? Oh my god. I thought you... And here I was, thinking you'd forgot me. I'd never forget my own sister. Sister? Peggy, what, what's happening? Why are you even there? want to explain, Peggy. Earlier, while you were speaking to Jason, I got a call. Do you remember? Yeah. Well, Obviously. it was from Dawn. She said that my sister Marie was there that night George died. And that I should come to the gym for a reunion. And when you walked in, you found out... That my sister is the whistling man. Good to see you too, Peggy. Why didn't you tell me any of this? She said that it was my last chance to see my sister. I knew 
if I told you you'd try to stop me or come with me when we need you on the radio. And I just... Oh my god, the radio... Oh, okay, kind of does. You should have said something. You should have told me. I know, okay? I should have. But I didn't imagine this situation then, so just... What happened to you, Marie? You just disappeared one day. Disappeared? I was thrown out, Peggy. I begged Mom and Dad to do something about what happened that night. But did they care? No. They told me to stay quiet. They didn't care when they learned I'd been with George. And... And... Marie, I'm so sorry. I never knew. It's not your fault. Really, it's mom and dad I should be seeing right now. But since they're dead and gone, well, I'll have to settle for the next best thing. Uh, wait. Is that why you went after that kid in the maze maze? Uh, Eugene Stein? Because his parents? Child of the That's corn right. maze. Eugene's parents were there that night. I. Too. I find that achievement really house. funny when it like collects that he was like their kid but, but they died Please. since like Mom and Dad are gone, Peggy. Besides, you forgot me. Just like the rest. You forgot. Is there any way I can prove Peggy didn't forget Marie? Marie, Peggy never forgot about you! Keep your mouth shut. She kept a card from you. She she kept it here, on her desk. What card? The card you made me for my eighth birthday. What does it say, then? Happy birthday, Peg. Now you're great and eight. Love, Em. I... Well, I... Hey, we did it. We fucking did it. Let's go. Be okay. God, Marie. Hey, Zara. I need you to look after Peggy. She needs help. Now, we got here just in the nick of time. Where's Marie? She bolted right as we got here. The police are right on her heels. It won't be long now. It's over, Forrest. Let's go! Well, folks, it was a long night, but we made it through together. I'm gonna head off to go check on Peggy. This is Ben, Forrest Nash. And it's been a scream. I had to end it like that. Come on. Come on. Oh, my fucking God. That was so fucking good. I loved, I love, love, loved playing that. Let's go look at this shit! Every single person alive, 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 alive. Hot <laughs> dude. Oh, I'm so happy. Yeah, 
I'm just gonna blast him right to the point. I'm so, so happy. Don't so worry about next time. We're just gonna aim to kill every single one. Why does Skull. Skull just looks like a streamer. I know. Not no, but like, it looks like they saw. I thought I'd just say that. go. Yeah! Well, this has been Killer Frequency. Oh, well, despite the many, many issues, we finally made it to the end, right? <laughs> good shit. Really good shit. Loved it. Loved this game so much. Definitely need to come back and then kill everyone. Go the complete opposite of what we just did. Until then, I need to go back to South Park. Need a break from this killer shit, you know? Oh well. See you guys tomorrow. <laughs>